All right, welcome back everybody. Now I'm super excited, isn't that magical? Uh, I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club, and right now I'm gonna be showing you the key tree or key chime. Now, this one has been around for a long time, maybe 35 years, 30 years at least. And I made this many years ago, and I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can make one. Uh, how the, I'll tell you how this one's made, and I'll give you some pointers on how you can make one that sounds great musical and I'll give you a couple th don'ts that you uh, you definitely don't want to do if you're making a key tree but let's just look at how this is constructed real quick obviously it's got a zillion different keys on it and uh, all the keys I got here I think I got, just went to a key shop like a locksmith kind of place and I just asked him for extra keys they have if you go to most places like that a locksmith or a place that cuts keys they'll probably have a bunch of keys in a bucket somewhere that they'll just give you. Um, and those were keys that are just either have been replaced or they didn't turn out right or they're blanks that are no longer used. But what I would recommend is that you get keys that are similar in size but also different. I did, when I made this one, um, I made another one and I thought, well, I'll use all the same size keys and see what that's like. It was okay, it was, as you can imagine, it was just kind of monotonal and I don't think it was as interesting. It was okay, but it just had one sound. It wasn't as varied as this one. Uh, so I wouldn't go to extremes. You know, you don't need giant keys and little tiny keys. Just get the like regular size, like house key, car key kind of keys, um, which I think are, are becoming more rare these days. But anyway, that's what I would recommend. Now let's look at construction. Um, on this one, I've got a one by two piece of wood just pine, cheap wood I got at the hardware store, uh, home improvement store. I've got one on the top, one on the bottom, and I've got the strings attached, uh, or the fishing line, this is fishing line. I've got it attached with these kind of uh, brass brads, I guess you can call them, um, tacks or brads, and that's it. That's how I secure the line. Now when I made it, I did little slip knots and attach the keys. So that's why they're kind of sticking sideways. See how this, these are sticking out to the sides. And I, I like that. I think it helps them interact with each other rather than hanging down. And on this one, there's also 13 lines that go across. And what is it? It's about, I don't know, maybe 16 inches uh, tall. Now, if you make these, here's a tip for you. Um, you can start at the top anywhere attaching the keys. But as you get down to the bottom, you want to make sure that you leave a little extra line at the bottom because if you don't do that, your keys can end up hitting whatever you have at the bottom, like the piece of wood you have at the bottom. And then there, it's going to make a clunky sound because it's going to have that wood sound getting hit by a key in your sound. This one doesn't have that because I left extra line at the bottom. So do that for sure. Uh, this one is also attached with a, just a hole, and the hole is small enough so that the wood stops um, on the cymbal stand where the normal washer or the plastic cymbal sleeve would also stop. So I just drilled the hole that big. If you want, you can use a washer on the back. This one doesn't have anything on the back side. And on the front, I just use a piece of felt and the, the wing nut, but I flip the wing nut over so that it is kind of upside down so the wings of the nut are holding the wood in place and that works pretty well. So that's how this is mounted. Uh, you can play it like I started, you know, just with your hands. You can uh, play it down grabbing the bottom. And now we've got uh, garbage collection trucks in the background and that's okay. Uh, I want to give you a tip later on how you can filter out some background noise if you're going to record this instrument. But for now, let me add some reverb. I want to go back to the sound we had at the beginning, which I had some reverb on, and then I'm going to add another effect after that. I'll play it for a second with reverb, and then I'm going to add a digital delay, and you can hear how that sounds, and you might want to use that as well in your own recordings. So the first thing you're going to hear is just the reverb. I'm going to do a short reverb, and then a longer reverb, and then the long reverb with a digital delay. Here we go.
And now a longer reverb. And now the reverb with delay. If I was recording this for a session, I would probably do uh, something like, well, let's see, I can't show you here, but I would take out all the low, because that way, when the garbage truck goes by, it's not gonna pick up that low rumble sound. So if you're recording these, I recommend using what's called a high pass filter, which is what it sounds like. It just lets the highs through, it lets them pass through, and it filters out the low frequencies, which are often just perceived as noise or rumbly sounds and things. So if you're recording a key tree, definitely uh, you can just record the high part of the frequency range and capture what you need and leave the rest behind. That would also be a recording tip for you. These are uh, very inexpensive to make. I think you got a lot of bang for your buck and you will unlock, you know I had to make some puns, come on you will unlock your musical potential when you have the keys. Now, the good thing about having this instrument with me is I never get locked out of anywhere. <laughs> you can go to any town and just get in cars and homes and all kinds of stuff. All right, don't do that. I'm kidding. But uh, what do you guys think? Is, is this something that you, you think is, it sounds good? Do you, do you like the sound? Would you want to make one? What other little metal items or other items, period, um, could you use this mounting system for? Because the keys are not the only thing that you could put into this kind of uh, system. All right, so if you like the video, like it, subscribe, and of course hit the bell or the key chime to get notifications. I'm Kalani, this is World Drum Club. Thanks for watching, you guys. I appreciate you guys a lot. And for more, see us at patreon.com slash Kalani and connect with me over there. Uh, for personal coaching and also community. We've got a lot of amazing, passionate people who love music over at patreon.com slash Kalani. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you later.